What's going on everybody and welcome to CS5 Unmasked, bringing you another costume tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how I created the Retro Jason costume from the 2017 Friday the 13th game, and I'm going to be doing this for around $25. Now I am fully aware that $25 really isn't a whole lot of money to try to make a game accurate costume with, but it sure beats the alternative. So sit back and relax, and welcome to CS5's Cost Cut Costume Tutorials. Alright, let's see what we're going to need for the costume. Well, we're going to need a mask and a hood, a purple work shirt, blue gloves, purple pants, and a set of blue boots. Alright, let's go ahead and start with the hood. Now I'm going to start off just using a balaclava that I picked up at LAexpress.com for just under a dollar, and this is going to be the base of the hood that I'm actually going to create. Now in all honesty, if you can find a purple balaclava and you're okay with that, you can actually save yourself quite a bit of money. Now fortunately I have a prop mannequin head that I can actually use to create my hood, but chances are you yourself may not actually have one of these. A milk jug or a balloon will actually work in its place. I'm going to go ahead and secure down the balaclava using some pop rivets and some old nails. This is going to ensure that it's not going to move around when I apply the silicone. Then I'm going to grab a couple rubber bands and just put it around the neck. This is just to ensure that there's a separation between the head and the neck. Alright, now we're going to create the skin portion of the hood. To actually make this actually work, you'll have to use 100% silicone caulking. It has to be 100% silicone, or this technique will not work at all. Using a gloved hand, I'm going to put some silicone directly in the middle. Now using some purple acrylic paint that I picked up at Walmart, I'm just going to put a little bit on the silicone, and then mix it all together. Then I'm going to apply it directly to the balaclava. I'm not trying to be too neat with this. I want it to smear and get all into the cracks and crevices. I'm going to repeat this process as many times as necessary until I have complete coverage over the entire balaclava. Alright, so after allowing it to dry for a couple of days, I'm going to take a can of flat black spray paint that I picked up at Lowe's and I'm going to go over the entire hood. After about 30 minutes, I'm going to take a damp rag and wipe the outer layer of black paint off of the hood. This is going to leave just a little bit in each one of those cracks and crevices to really give it an aged and dirty look. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the mask. This is a cheap hockey mask I picked up at LIexpress.com for around a dollar. And if you're wondering how I get these masks for so cheap, when you buy them out of season, you can typically pick up 20 or 30 of these low quality masks for just under a dollar a piece. But they are pretty low quality and they typically have a tendency of breaking more often than not. Now I went ahead and removed the strap and set it off to the side because we will use it later. I'm going to go ahead and proceed to sand the mask with just some cheap sandpaper that I picked up at the local dollar store. Now once the mask has been sanded, I'm going to cover up three of the five snaps, leaving the two bottom ones exposed. I'm going to proceed to spray paint the mask using a seaside satin, which seems to be the paint of choice for most mask creators. And it really is a good looking color to make any retro Jason costume with. Now once the paint dries on the mask, we're going to proceed to put the strap back on. Now being as we have the satin seaside paint available to us, I might as well go ahead and make up the boots. Now this is just a pair of black work boots, I picked up at a yard sale for about $2.50 and I'm actually just going to spray paint them. I went ahead and removed the laces and then just spray painted the boots. And I'll probably give these about 3 or 4 days for them to actually dry properly before I'd even attempt to put the shoelaces back in, or even wear them. Now as far as the gloves are concerned, this is just a pair of women's opera gloves that I picked up at LAexpress.com for around a dollar. Now you can get these in all sorts of different colors. I chose to go with this particular blue, because it was actually the closest resemblance to the color that I wanted. And when I did get them, I realized they were actually quite shiny, 
and a bit distracting. So grabbing the spray paint again, I just did a really light coat over both sides of the gloves just to take some of that shine away. Now if you are curious, these gloves are made of spandex, so they will fit a multitude of hands. And especially for a dollar, this is definitely a perfect fit. Now let's move on to the clothes. Yard sales and thrift stores are always the best bet to get a great deal on clothes that you ultimately plan on destroying. I was able to pick up a pair of pants and a shirt from a yard sale for a total of $3. I am going to be using a fabric dye to dye these clothes a different color. The dye that I actually did use is an all-purpose liquid dye from Walmart and I chose to go eggplant because it was the darkest purple I could come across. Now just a little bit of precaution, when you do plan on dyeing your clothes, try to do everything outside. This stuff is very messy and it will stain anything that it touches. Now the instructions to actually dye your fabric is pretty self-explanatory and it is well written on the back of the bottle. Essentially we're just going to boil 3 gallons of water, place it into a tub or container, we're going to pre-soak the clothes, add a little bit of dish soap and a cup of salt and then add the fabric dye. Stir it all around and then place the clothes inside. You're going to continuously mix the clothes in the fabric dye for about 30 to 60 minutes. The longer the time in the dye, the darker the colors will actually be. I chose to go for the entire 60 minutes, mixing it up about every 10 minutes just to ensure that every inch of the fabric has been saturated with the dye. Once the 60 minutes was up, I went ahead and wrung out the clothes from the dye and placed it into some warm water. This is going to be one of many rinses that you'll have to do. I'm going to go ahead and continue to rinse these out with cool water to get rid of any excess dye. I ended up repeating this process approximately 10 times just to ensure that there was no additional dye coming out of the clothes. After that, I went and threw them in the wash machine per the instructions. And I also had placed an old dingy towel in the wash as well. This will capture any additional dye that is released during the washing process. So once I was done washing the clothes, I did allow them to air dry overnight. Now one thing that I should have done earlier, when I went and removed the top flap to the upper right chest pocket, I should have done that before I dyed the clothes. Because it left this really weird line where the stitching was. But overall it still looks pretty good and I'm very pleased with the overall result. Alright, let's go ahead and tally everything up and see how much it actually cost. And as you can plainly see, it is just right around $25. Okay, let's put everything together and see what it looks like. Alright, I hope you guys really liked the video. I had an absolute blast making this retro Jason costume. So if you guys have any suggestions of costumes that you would like me to make in the future, let me know down below. Alright everybody, until next time, this is CS5 signing out, and I hope to see you in the next video.